I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city the, on the, earth. Beat a bop, bop, boom. Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Most Haunted City on Earth. My name is Madison Timmons and you might be noticing that I am by myself for this intro. Uh, Chris, unfortunately, is not going to be here today with us. He had a little emergency out in Atlanta, so he had to make a quick trip out there. But do not worry, he is fine. Everything is all good, but today I will be doing a solo venture with our guests. So uh, today we have a very special pair with us. We have Sawyer and Kathy, and uh, Sawyer is a former member of Heaven's Gate, and they are both current believers in Heaven's Gate. So we're really excited to pick y'all's brains and get a little bit of um, info on your experience. So uh, before we get started into that, though, we do have a few patrons that we want to thank, some new para junkies. So we wanted to thank Sarah Booten, Veronica Torres, Eric J. Flynn, Bridget, Amanda Murphy, Megan Ma- uh, Marie, Claire Brack, Patrick Young, Postal Kitty, Jesse Fergan, Vanessa, and Kirsten Martin. So thank you guys so much for joining us over in the Para Junkie world on Patreon. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying some of the new exclusive content. And if you are not already a Para Junkie, you definitely should consider becoming one. We just put out an exclusive episode for Lake Lanier, uh, which is one of the most haunted and one of the most deadly lakes in America. So definitely an interesting uh, episode. So, uh, But with that... Sawyer and Kathy, hello. Hello. <laughs> Would you guys like to introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Um, the name Sawyer uh, came from Doe. He gave me that name. Doe is, is known in the media as Marshall Applewhite. And uh, um, I joined with, well, I was living on the West Coast, uh, o- Oregon, and uh, I went to a meeting that was advertised by a poster about UFOs, and I didn't really care about UFOs, but uh, the meeting intrigued me. And so I went to the meeting, and for some reason, I, even though I was a spiritual seeker and I questioned a lot of things and I debated with people about religions and things, I believed everything he said, even though I didn't understand everything he was saying. It just made sense to me. Like, like you know, so, so I joined with them, and uh, that began 19 years of uh, being a fully dedicated uh, student. And um, there's so much to say about that. I'm not sure how much. Absolutely, we'll get into some questions for it. Yeah. But yes, um, now Kathy, you were not a part of the original group, uh, but. How did you and Sawyer kind of get together, and when did you start uh, believing in Heaven's Gate? It was about four years ago. I'm 48 now, and I was around 44 at that time. I had just moved from Phoenix, Arizona, where I'd lived for 15 years or so, to Cincinnati. So I was kind of in like a, I didn't know anybody. I moved in with my mom. Sure. <laughs> Hard times, whatever. Um and I was watching a documentary about Heaven's Gate and um, some other cults. And the presenter said that there was over, I think, 12 to 13 hours of Marshall Applewhite Doe talking on YouTube. And that the group had been around for 20-something years. And I was thinking, what was he saying to those people for 20-something years that ultimately ended in how it ended right I want to go hear what he was actually saying and so I went to YouTube and I found the Beyond Human series and I watched it I watched the first one and like Sawyer said it it just all made sense to me even though I didn't really understand it it was just, I'd never heard anybody talk like that before like you know the whole Jesus came down on a UFO 
kind of thing and equating God with an alien, mm -hmm. um, even though Doe didn't use that terminology. Um, there's a lot of definitions, and that was something that attracted me to it as well, was just learning about all of it. I like to research things, and I'd always been interested in all different kinds of things, and from that point forward, I honestly was a believer, and I started watching all of the Beyond Human series in my room, and whenever I would hear my mom or my daughter come, you know, I would, like, quickly turn it off. Right. And then I got to the point where it was like, I actually believe this stuff. Like, I don't know if I'm going crazy, but I believe this. And I sat with my mom, and we watched one, and she was like, that's interesting. And then um, I thought, well, what's what do I do? I, I believe this. Like, what do I do? I want to talk to people about this. I want to like, who is left behind? Who is still here? Sure. And, um, I was searching and I found out about him and also of course the heaven's gate website. And I communicated with the webmasters of that site. It's two individuals that were also in the group for 12 years before they were sent out of the group. But, um, Sawyer was on YouTube, he still is, and I started watching all of his videos and interacting with him in the live stream and asking him questions and challenging him and <laughs> talking to other people and started friending other people on Facebook and we were just having these conversations and it got to the point where I felt like I needed to meet him in person and um, so I told him, I said, I'm coming to where you live in upstate New York, Vermont, actually, and um, we can meet at a campground. And he was kind of like, whoa. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Very forward. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was just like, I have to come meet you. It was kind of yeah. like a, I want to sit with you and I want you to tell me everything that you did in the group and everything they said and how you, you know, just everything. I want to know everything. And within that, I think it was about three days. It sounds cliche or whatever, but we fell in love and we immediately started a relationship. And we told her I hadn't been with anybody for over 17 years. Wow. And he was close as well. I thought I had the celibate thing knocked. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I'm, I don't even worry about that. And to immediately like what happened between us was confusing and hard because our quote-unquote religion is celibacy oh. so it's like how do we be how do we feel like this for each other but be celibate at the same time right how do we justify that because we've been asked that quite a bit but regardless of that we started a relationship we moved in with each other <laughs> and we've been together ever since oh. and that was about a year ago wow that's awesome wow. a little over a year ago actually we met in September of 2021 Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> um, well, I do have a few questions uh, from Chris and I both. So I do uh, want to start out with, so um, I kind of want to hear both of your perspectives of what really drew you to Heaven's Gate and what was the appeal of the teachings that really hooked you? Um, I guess the appeal of the teachings that hooked me, which is not a bad term, because uh, I was like a fish in the sea. And, uh, and their information, which I believe is the truth, in other words, it's, it's demonstrating, demonstrating reality, that there, is, uh, there are creators, people. They're real people, they have physical bodies, and they, uh, they have transportation, and those transportation, when they allow themselves to be seen, are uh, lately have been called, uh, lately, you know, the last 200 years or so, have been called UFOs or, you know, unidentified flying objects. Um, you know, when in, in the record books, they would, would have been called like a cloud of light or, and I wasn't, uh, I was raised in a, my vehicle, my body and mind, was brought up in a uh, Catholic environment, so I kind of believed, you know, I thought Jesus was a very special person, uh, but I didn't go any much further than that. And, uh, and so I, I thought that when I went to the meeting, 
1975, I remember going around town after the meeting telling people that I feel like I sat in front of the equivalent of Jesus. Because they weren't saying they were Jesus. T and Do. T being Do's older member. That's another discussion. Sure. So, uh, but something else that attracted me, well, I mean, when I first saw the poster that was advertising the meeting, I uh, said to, to my, actually, I said out loud to the person I was with, um, I wonder what these people are going to look like because the poster, which it might be good to post that somewhere for people to see, s- said that there were people from outer space that mm-hmm. were here to share the process of becoming a member of this outer space community. I'm using my own words. Sure. Um, and, uh, and that intrigued me to the degree that I, I thought, it, it made sense to me that it was possible, okay? And uh, so I remember thinking, I wonder what these people are going to look like. You know, that's kind of a silly kind of thing maybe, but that's the first thought that I had. And then the second thought I had was where the poster said that uh, this is not a talk about UFOs and phenomena, but this information has already prompted a number of individuals to give their entire effort to this process of becoming a member of the level above human, what was called in the past the kingdom of God, the kingdom in the heavens. And uh, that giving all somehow meant something a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And even though I didn't demonstrate that in my life before that, because I wasn't giving my all to anything, and I didn't even know what that meant, giving your all to something. And uh, so, and then from the, and, and then like, you know, I've said before, they passed out a, a, a flyer that was like a, a, they called it Statement One, that Doe wrote. And, uh, and when I read it, it, it just like, wow, I know this stuff. You know, this makes sense to me. The same way I, I felt like I knew that uh, there were people in outer space. And the same way that I knew that there were uh, discarnate humans mm. circulating around us all the time. You know, spirits, ghosts, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I mean, those are the kind of things that I felt like I knew. It wasn't like I had to study that right. to, to believe that. And so when, when Doe and T were talking about those kind of things and other things, it was like, okay, uh, it's like bringing back to my memory, conscious memory, because uh, these bodies aren't all we are. Awesome. That's a very enlightening answer, honestly. Um, and very different than how the media kind of portrays uh, Heaven's Gate. So... Like, on the topic of, you know, that, how do you feel like, uh, with all the documentaries that have come out about Heaven's Gate and uh, the representation it's been given, how, how do you feel like it differentiates from your actual experience within it and how the public has perceived the group? Well, it's a vast difference, like you pointed out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, not that the actual events and how many people and, you know, their gender and, you know, all those things mostly has been, has become factual. Um, but in terms of, uh, you know, portraying Doe as having mesmerized everybody and and led them down this path of no return and, and uh, the way that it's continuously being played in the media is totally inaccurate, totally inaccurate. And I have a lot of proof of that. It's not just from Doe's own words over, we have like over a thousand audio tapes that T and Doe started um, taping the the meetings that were going on within the group, within the students. And that started in 1982 with the taping of uh, their meetings. 
And uh, when somebody starts to listen to those tapes, they, le- they get a whole different picture than what the media is presenting. Right. And, and some people, you know, have the psychologists and the so-called experts uh, have, you know, said that, well, it really went downhill after T died, left our vehicle, the way that we would talk about it. And, uh, and but the facts are that... Um, I can I can show up many facts that it didn't go downhill at all. T was 100% behind everything Doe did, mm-hmm. and Doe is very methodical about uh, making sure that nobody was doing anything against their will, not even in a manipulative way, not even in a guilting kind of way, or not even in any kind of way. He actually. Uh, demonstrates uh, being from someplace out of this world, and uh, and that there's no negativity where they're from, and uh, and the, the opposite of the way things happen in the world in the human kingdom. Um, for instance, in the human kingdom, people rise up to become leaders, and then they tell everybody how to do everything and what to do, and when to do it. And uh, they make all kinds of rules of behavior, but the next level, and they force it on people, make it so that you go to jail if you don't do this and that. And you know, sometimes that might be a good thing, but, uh, but the next level isn't like that. The next level above human, the members of that level above human, they don't act like that. They, they present the opportunity to embrace what they're teaching and leave it up to us to actually apply it. So they give us the tools like um, in order to take over these bodies because these bodies are genetically and uh, environmentally programmed by you know, uh, everything that they've been experiencing to act in certain ways, to believe in certain things. And, uh, but none of those behaviors even though they're good, they're the right behaviors for the human kingdom, they can't be taking those behaviors into the level above human. Gotcha. Because they're actually working on lab- in laboratories on spacecrafts that can be as big as planets. And inside the planets and outside the planets, and they, go, they zip around, you know, doing their tasks. Uh, and they have a lot of tasks. It's, there's not... not much that's automatic. I mean, there's a lot of automatic systems, mm-hmm. but they can change those systems. But they work within the physics of those systems that they developed. They're so far above human, it's, it's comparable to having a, a, a dog or a cat as a pet and living in the household with a human. You know, that pet may think that they know a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. but compared to a human, they don't know nothing. Hardly. Gotcha. I mean, you know, they, they have their instincts and they have their own sense of knowing things and they're very intelligent in some ways, um, but not compared to a human. So uh, the then next you level members. compare humans to next level members and we're the same parallel. Right? Yes. As far as a dog to a human, not to say that humans are dogs, but that's the, the distance between. It's literally the level above being human right it's evolutionary one of i i want to point out really quick that one of the main misconceptions is that like sawyer was saying people were mesmerized and controlled the doors were never locked i mean i'm sure they were locked at night so nobody would come (laughs) in right whatever but But you could get out you could leave at any time in fact doe from what sawyer has said and what i've heard other members say Doe would offer them periodically. Anybody sitting in this room, if because because they're holding them back, they're holding the group was a unit, and they all had to be on the same page as they moved through this process of overcoming their humanity. So, if we're stuck, there's not, there's a reason, and he would ask, if anybody isn't feeling this, anybody doesn't want to be here, leave, go. This isn't for you. You're holding us all back. I mean, I'm using my own terminology. That's yeah. not exactly what he would say. He would give them money 
to leave. Wow. So it wasn't like a, because that, that was the thing that drew me into it too, is like, I think cults are fascinating. And I think, you know, keeping people up for all hours of the day and for weeks on in and just hammering, you know, crazy stuff into their head. I'm just like, whoa. Right. <laughs> like the whole brainwashing process. And like what we've said a number of times and even on the tapes, T and Doe talk about it. You want to wash your brain. You want to wash your brain of all of the human programming that you've been programmed with as soon as you pop out, even while you're in the womb, your genetic code and everything makes you who you think you are. All the influences that we hear all the time. Like when we're hearing thoughts, half the time they're probably not even our thoughts, but we think they are. And once you learn to see that for what it is, I don't know. It just uh, is, is eye-opening, mind-opening. Right. They were given the opportunity to leave whenever the heck they wanted. In fact, many people did leave and maybe tried to find the group later but couldn't. Right. That's very fascinating because typically, you know, like when you hear of uh, cult-like groups, they, they always talk about, like, there was no way to get out because you'd be in financial ruin or whatever. Right. You didn't have mm -hmm. the worldly possessions anymore. You were disconnected from your family. Right. So it wasn't like that at all. So when you first joined, did they give you any stipulations that, of things that you had to get rid of at all? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, there were a lot of things. Well, the first thing was that you had to disconnect from your past mm -hmm. because you needed to rebuild your mind with what they were giving us. So right. that looks very bad, you know, to the outside person that says, oh, yeah, they we're going to brainwash you. Well, yes, like Kathy said, uh, the idea was to wash your mind of the uh, behaviors and ways of the human kingdom because the human kingdom is an animal kingdom. It's a mammalian uh, seed-bearing uh, condition of life. And the next level members aren't like that. They don't reproduce. Uh, they don't die. They don't. Uh, um, they can grow physical bodies on a vine, uh, like the, like a plant grows. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> or in a test tube. Or in a test tube. However, they do it. Yes, and uh, and and so it's really a matter of like we're offering you employment with the Creator's kingdom of people, mm -hmm. and if if you uh, want to be employed by us and actually be a part of our family. It's not just a, like a, a, a non-emotional kind of relationship. It's not, it is plenty of emotion involved. Um, but, uh, but in order to be among them, they don't want anybody to be there that doesn't want to be there, and also that doesn't want to contribute, be of service to the whole motion of the, the, uh, the kingdom. And so, so that the training of that means getting rid of everything that's human. And uh, that's, uh, that, that's something that I had no idea what I needed to get rid of. But at first, what they said was, take a few days to wrap up the loose ends of your life. Do it quickly, because people will try to talk you out of it. If you want, I mean, if you want to be talked out of it, fine. But if you don't want to be talked out of it, then do it quickly, and and then and then don't leave any aces in the hole. You know, like a bank account you can refer to later. And uh, they said that uh, you don't have to bring anything. But if you have a car, we need cars right now because we're traveling, holding meetings. It's practical, and you can donate some money because we need money to buy our food. Blah 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 blah. And uh, I had $50 when I joined. I was kind of like a hippie guy, you know, so uh, I didn't have much money. And, uh, and then they provided uh, camping equipment, and it, they also said bring camping equipment because we're living outdoors and in state parks and things like that uh, as we travel around holding meetings. 
And, uh, but we had to disconnect from the past to the degree that if we had a thought about the past, we would block it. Oh, okay. But see, there was no, there was no mechanism to force us to do that. So uh, any, any one of us could have been thinking about the past all day long, and nobody would have known the difference. So they, they didn't have any way of, you know, interrogating people uh, like that. But things like that would come up, uh, and uh, they, they did want to know if we were um, abiding by uh, the lesson steps, they called them, that they were giving us. Uh, and there were a lot of things that happened uh, that were lesson steps. Um, so I'm not sure if I covered that question. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. And it's really interesting, you know, because it, it's, it sounds so different than how you would imagine it being. And it's very fascinating to hear how much of a community they tried to make it. But I do wonder one thing, like, so with this, the mass suicide, was that something that they told you from the beginning was going to happen? Or was there a process that went about where people had to make decisions if they were ready to leave their vessel or if it was, you know, something that they were, they, it was from the start. They wanted to give you that warning. That was what you were preparing for. Look, Bumble knows you're exhausted by dating. All the, must not take yourself too seriously and 6-1 since that matters. And what do I even say other than, hey, <sighs> well... That's why they're introducing an all-new Bumble with exciting features to make compatibility easier, starting the chat better, and dating safer. They've changed, so you don't have to. Download the new Bumble now. No, there, were, there was, uh, well, see, it's, it's, a, it's a very involved answer, and maybe Kathy can fill in things that I, I don't cover on it. But... Um, Actually, it was kind of, uh, kind of uh, strange in a way because in the beginning, T and Do felt like uh, the students would actually get on board the spacecraft with their bodies. Oh. And at the time, I thought that I would die as like a martyr. But then T and Do would say, this is not a martyrdom trip. And... Uh, uh, that you can go into the next level without dying. And what I understood from that was that if you put everything into motion as fast as you could and you learned all the lessons as well as you could, then you were actually putting into effect a chemical changes in your body, in the physical body, immune body, uh, like a metamorphosis. Mm -hmm that was actually changing like a caterpillar into a butterfly to where that butterfly body now has a whole different range of activity and environment that it can fly around to and do. Uh, where the human caterpillar is limited uh, you know, to the branches on the tree or whatever, you know, it is. And so that metamorphosis is actually a literal chemical, biological and mental, of course, because mental is also uh, has its physicality associated with it, like a plasma kind of mm -hmm. physicality that we can't see and measure. But uh, that spirit, a mind, is the, the word that they used. But uh, so, but then, as things progressed, and they were giving meetings. And the press got the story, which is another big story that I've talked about many times. But uh, they, they at first thought that they were perhaps, they felt like the book of Revelations that are known to Christians uh, was talking about in Revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses, they felt like that was them. That must have been them. Because they felt like they knew that they came from outer space and that it was the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and that they had something to do 
with fulfilling prophecy, and they had updates to bring to the Bible. That was the first kind of chunk of information that they got in 1973. And then they tried to figure out what updates they were going to bring to the Bible and also what prophecies they were going to fulfill. So they started studying all the prophecies from all the different religions that they could find. And so they, in a sense, believed at, for, at first that, that all those verses in the, the two witnesses prophecy was going to apply to them. Then when uh, Walter Cronkite got on the national news and said that a bunch of people left from uh, Walport, Oregon, mm. where I was from, basically, and uh, that dis disappeared to get a ride on a UFO to heaven, uh, when that happened, uh, they felt like the mission was dead and that their credibility was going to be completely destroyed. And it, over three days, they realized that their credibility was already destroyed by everything they were saying. And so uh, they were going to go to the students and say that, um, that they don't know if the demonstration, they called it a demonstration of dying and then being, resurrecting like Jesus did, uh, um, they didn't know if that was going to happen. And that they would completely understand if students um, didn't want to follow them anymore because they made such a big part of their mission as demonstrating overcoming death and that the students would be then taken uh, on a UFO with their bodies. So, so they, they brought that to the student body, which I was among, and, and for the most part, didn't matter to anybody. It didn't matter to me. I wasn't there because of some fulfillment of prophecy. I didn't even hardly know about those prophecies until I started to read about them. And, uh, and it was fascinating to do that, but uh, it didn't mean, it wasn't, uh, and that's the way everything happened over the years. And so uh, then in 1978, T&O said, well, maybe we'll leave before you all. And then I'm skipping a lot because I have to because it's such an involved story. But uh, um, then it was approximately uh, 1985, um, I think right after T left, that I was moving. Uh, I was moving furniture from Doe's uh, bed chamber, his rest, his rest chamber. We called it rest chamber. And uh, I saw the book from the Hemlock Society that uh, gives the description of all the ways somebody could kill themselves. And, and, and uh, that was in his quarters. And he left it there because all his personal stuff was gone. He left that book there. And, uh, and that book became part of our library. And so I ended up looking at it and thinking, do I want to die this way? You know, I don't know if I want to die this way. You know, I thought I would probably die... Uh, in service to the next level, but I didn't really look forward to it. And TNO didn't either. Uh, I would prefer to have left with my body. And that's what the students said in the end as well. I mean, in the, on the Heaven's Gate website, you can see that in, the, in their document, our position against suicide, which is a big, ex, you know, there's an explanation to the, for that title. Uh, they, they said that they preferred to leave with their bodies, but they were willing to leave in any way that it took. I see. Interesting. So were the people who were a part of the demonstration, were they like a higher ranking in the group, or were they just volunteers to perform the demonstration? Um, what brought those people specifically? Well, the, the demonstration was T and O demonstrating conquering death. So they're the only people that were, would be involved in this demonstration. What they told us was that, watch the news, and you will see that uh, some kind of indication that uh, the demonstration was going to happen or something like that. And, and when you see that, go to that area that's talked about. And because I was by myself, actually, with my partner, 
uh, at the time that TNO signed me to be with uh, as a you know a platonic relationship purely and uh, and I was traveling around town to town holding little meetings uh, and I didn't ha- I wasn't in touch with it, with T and Do or anybody else from the group and uh, as I was going to newspapers and libraries I was hitchhiking a lot of that time mm-hmm. and uh, to get out of the winter and stuff and uh, I'd be looking for articles or any, you know anything that would tell me about a demonstration happening. And there were articles about T and O in, in the paper a lot of times during those years in 75 and 76. So uh, so, so that that demonstration was uh, just T and O. Okay. I see. Awesome. Interesting. Um, now, Kathy, since you joined after all of this, did that scare you at all? Um, like the thought of, you know, having to go through possibly, you know, death however way it's uh, prophesized almost. Did that scare you? Um, no. And the reason is because, like Sawyer was mentioning, that, that document on the Heaven's Gate website, it's called Our Position Against Suicide, which is uh, seems kind of like, a, what, ironic, I guess, is be the word, because <laughs> they did... Um, to all intents and purposes for humans commit suicide, right? Um, The process of overcoming our humanity means you have to be a human to overcome it. This earth is a training ground. It's an experiment. It's one big lab. And we as humans are all here to try and find the truth. And if we didn't have our humanity, once we learn that truth of overcoming our humanity, it's hard to explain, obviously. I'm struggling for words. But you can't learn lessons without having a body to learn them in. T and Doe talked about when they were together before T left in 85 that um, this is the perfect world. This is the, it's a a melting pot, the United States of America specifically, um, of different cultures, different people, and different corrupt levels. Um, They're, I believe, in ghosts. Spirits, uh, discarnates. I believe in um, what we refer to as uh, fallen space angel souls that were once in the next level and fell away and were cast out or just never found their way back. Those beings are here influencing us. We all have to make the choice to either listen to them or not. Even uh, it's even a huge filter to even hear this information and just it's easy to just cast it aside and go, that's just completely insane. And there's no way that that could be true. And there might be something in the back of your head going, well, what if it is true, though? Like, uh oh, (laughs) I'm missing the bus here. Right. And I'm just going to be sitting, you know, down on this planet being a human and live and die this way. And then just be, quote unquote, reincarnated to try and figure it out again, over and over and over and over again. We need our bodies to learn that lesson. We need our, our human minds to have our next level mind come into and pull through our conscious mind and realize the truth that there is another realm, another level, the next level that created this one and everything involved in this whole entire universe. And how do we get back to that level? It's by denying, I don't want to say denying, but it's like cutting your ties with what you were before. Right. Just like Jesus talked about, you have to leave everything behind and follow me. Um, and that's a hard thing to do. That was one of the things that attracted me to wanting to be a Christian before. Um, in my teenage years, it was just like, wow, like the 
the disciples and then, you know, later on martyrs and all these monks and all, you know, they were just like gave everything towards their effort of overcoming being, you know, just a human. Mm -hmm. Like there's more spiritual um, existence that a lot of people don't acknowledge. Right. It's that state of enlightenment that you're trying to, in other words, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your brain needs support. And new Ollie Brainy Chews are a delightful way to take care of your cognitive health. Made with scientifically backed ingredients like Thai ginger, L-theanine, and caffeine. Brainy Chews support healthy brain function and help you find your focus, stay chill, or get energized. Be kind to your mind and get these nootropic chews at ollie.com. That's O-L-L-Y dot com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. That makes that makes sense. I mean, so when it, when you talk about paranormal and stuff, uh, it's an interesting point to bring up because I was wondering, I'm like, so would you say all ghosts are those fallen um, souls or are no, they like when a human dies, like even just even right in the area that we're at now? Um, we we just currently moved like 50 miles from here where the campground that we're staying at. And you know, we've been staying right out oh, yeah, here. Yeah. And for the first couple of weeks that I was here, I was okay. I can block things out. But in just this area alone, there are at least 100,000 dead people walking oh, around. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And when I talk to certain people and they're like, well, this is what happened literally right where your RV is parked. I'm like, oh, that makes sense because this woman came to me and then I saw a wolf and, you know, all this Native American stuff that went on and torture and, and death and some Civil War stuff. It's just ev anywhere you go on this planet, there's dead people. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, somebody was saying that, you know, Savannah is the most haunted city. I'm like, they all are. I mean, absolutely, <laughs> you know, <laughs> dead people don't go away. So when humans die, they, they become discarnates, they become spirit. And if they didn't, if they don't believe in heaven, let's say, then they are just stuck on this planet. They well, half of them don't even know it. Right. Like or, the, the or, loop yeah. ghost, right. you know, the, the, people that are walking through walls and it's like wow how can they walk through a wall it's like well because this these walls weren't here and they were in a house and they're just walking up the stairs of their house they're just on repeat they're just playing that programming out even after they're gone which to me is really sad and I used mm -hmm. to want to help them when I first met Sawyer I was like well maybe we can save Satan yeah. Like maybe he just needs to be talked to. He just needs a hug. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like he just needs to know like, hey man. Yeah. <laughs> but <Absolutely>. no. <laughs> but uh, T and Doe said that uh, the next level loves Lucifer. Mm. But that Lucifer lost sight of who his older members are. Mm. And it got to a point to where he, after many opportunities, he couldn't, he couldn't actually recognize that they existed uh, or, or thought of them as another space alien group, you know, another space race, and that he could do things without them. And, uh, and it's not possible. Actually, nothing that humans do uh, came about by human instigation. Uh, it, it can't, I mean, the desire is there for humans to learn things and to invent things and all that and to fix, you know, fix problems, but it's the next level that provides uh, um, the help to do that when they're ready to provide it. And they do that even through making available those space alien souls that uh, want to develop technology. So, um, so it's like Next Level is working with everything because they, they wanted us to have the option to become like them or to become like members of the Next Level. But can I say a little bit more about the suicide? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, right after I saw that, that book, 
um, Doe bought a yacht because we just saw the Cocoon movie. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he, was, he was thinking that maybe T was giving him that movie because she had left her vehicle right before that. And uh, as an indication of maybe something that he might do. And so the, what, what he would do when he would get ideas like that is he would consider it. And then sometimes if there was no ramifications that couldn't be reversed, then he would take a step in that direction. So the step in the direction he took was he bought a yacht. And then he had a crew go down to Houston where it was docked and try to paint it and you know, bring it up to snuff. Anyway, and I remember thinking at the time, I wonder if we're going to go out onto the ocean, and if the spacecraft doesn't pick us up, I wonder if we're going to just sink it or something or drown. And how would that be? You know, how, and I thought, well, I really don't want to go that way, but I, if that's what happens, that's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so I was willing to go through whatever it took. But, uh, but then, you know, he realized that that wasn't part of the program, so he sold the yacht. And, uh, and then we started uh, to go public for the second time after 17 years of being kind of isolated from the world, Mm -hmm. living on ranch lands and outdoors for a long time, and then living in houses in all different cities, in the West mostly, Western United States. And, and, uh, you know, Doe was examining the whole time what was going to be the conclusion of this task. And was there more to do? And were there, were we going to do a demonstration of the same thing that Jesus' disciples went through, to where people hated them and uh, you know and and tried to you know get rid of them, snuff them up, and uh, and so he started putting out started projects, talking to the sexaholics, talking to the UFO people you know, uh, the people that believed in that and circulate in those arenas, and, uh, and, and health consciousness. Uh, we developed a book called Transfiguration Diet so that our vehicles could be as healthy as possible for as long as we needed to be here. But the whole time he was examining all these things, he was thinking, T, he's talking to T in his head, and thinking, what would you have me do? What would you have me do? What steps would you have me take? And he didn't want to change what T had put into effect before that, but then he got a strong indication from T in his mind that uh, um, you have to change things. You have to develop the program more because uh, the students need to be tested with a lot of different ways of thinking and with their own sense of of what they're uh, what they're doing realistically uh, he didn't want people to have this spiritual idea that they were going to go you know float on a cloud somewhere uh, you know uh, doing tasks when they couldn't even control their thoughts they could, they could be in a laboratory in the next level and they could be having thoughts at first he said when you got into the next level if you were allowed to get into the next level at an early age development of the vehicle, um, I mean the mind, uh, that it would be in awe of everything. But then pretty soon, you'd be observing what was going on because at first you would be an observer in laboratories. And pretty soon you'd be starting to make suggestions on how to do this and how to do that. And, mm-hmm. and to people that have been doing these tasks for, you know, timeless and, and they're always improving their tasks. So, uh, you know, to, to think that, it's be like a dog saying to the master, you could do this differently or this differently. You know, once they got into the house and they were included in the family to the degree that they were. And, uh, and the next level members would see that as static in their environment because they, they, they communicate by thought. So if you can't control your thoughts, then you can't be in the next level. Anyway, back to the suicide. Um, to T and O, they were souls. 
And souls were real beings, actually, that were growing, potentially. And uh, that to do it, ta- those souls were brought back from all the previous times that the next level planted those souls in human vehicles at the time, over thousands of years. I and would even, almost say millions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could be. We don't know how long. We don't know how many civilizations there have been. And this could also apply to different planets where there are yeah. human right. equivalent people living. And so all those souls were brought back in order to go through the, making the choices of going through a graduation experience. Not the ceremony, but the process of, of changing the programming from human programming and behaviors and ways is all part of that to next level behaviors and ways and programming. And that's a choice and that becomes us. So, so even though it's programming, it's, it, it's not like robotic. None of it's robotic unless we do it robotically. And the next level doesn't do anything robotically. They can make robots, but they, they don't uh, make robots to be um, in their family. Among they have them. souls. Right, so, so those started, uh, like it was about three years, about 1994, actually, exactly, in about August, when he told us that we're in the group after we had done about nine months of me- public meetings for the second time over those uh, 20 years, or 19 years, he said... Uh, um, we may have to take it upon ourselves to exit our vehicles. Because he was wondering, by going public again, and actually being very bold about Doe being the same soul that was in the body that was named Jesus. That's why it wasn't Jesus, because that was the name of the body. And, uh, and that his older member, T, was actually the same soul that Jesus referred to as his heavenly father, and that also T was the same soul that was identified himself, herself, the gender. They don't have gender in the next level, so the, the pronouns don't mean anything in that regard, but they use he for the most part. Uh, and that's not, to, you know, that's no reflection on. Uh, our gender, our pronouns. But it's funny that pronouns are such a big thing right now mm-hmm. for people. And when they're next level, you know, it doesn't have them, them really. But uh, so, but anyway, she was Jehovah. And Doe was Moses, using that body that was named Moses. And also Elijah, and then also Enoch, and then also Adam. So Doe started the experiment in the vehicle, Adam, and he flunked the experiment at first. Anyway, so back to the trying to put a, a period on the end of this subject of suicide. Um, when he saw that they were, that you know that Christians were kind of ignoring us, uh, and you know. And so that nobody was going to bump us off, you know, which they didn't really want to happen, but they were willing to have happen. And uh, I say they, but it was me also. I felt the same way. And not because I was told about it. I just felt like that right from the beginning. Uh, It was part of my program. Probably because the soul that came back to take this vehicle over Mm -hmm. had that experience in the past. Yeah. And, uh, but that wasn't the stage we're at now. And so for me to linger on that was something I had to not give any effort to. And so uh, that's, and so Doe held a meeting at that point uh, for all the students that had joined, even with that idea of knowing that we might use our own hand to exit our vehicles. And uh, which is a very, very big leap for somebody that joined in 1994. Um, but some individuals felt like that made sense to them. Mm. And uh, others left the group after that meeting that he had where he described uh, that process of uh, 
leaving our vehicles, and that was 1994. And so every, every time he would bring it up, people were challenged. Uh, he asked, if, does anybody have any reservations between us? He asked that in public, you know, in the meeting public. Uh, I, mean, I mean, with the student body. And, uh, and a few people said, uh, no, I really don't want to do that. And I'm not ready for, I do have reservations about doing that. And they arranged for them to leave the classroom the next day. And, uh, and even Rio, the last one to leave the classroom, approximately two weeks before uh, they laid down their vehicles, uh, committed uh, what humans call suicide, which was not suicide of the soul. It was suicide of the human vehicle. That's what we're talking about. And uh, which is not, it's not in the, in the cards now, and it's never going to be in the cards uh, during this civilization, as far as I know, um, because the older member's not here. The older members need to be present for that, for, to take that kind of a step that can't be reversed. That's and, why I wasn't, you know, thinking, oh, I'm going to have to commit suicide. Right. Because there is no next level representative incarnate on this planet right now. And that is one of the factors that would have to be present. I see. It's like we're not in an overcoming classroom right now either because you need somebody who's already done that process to lead you through it. Doe um, in the end referred to himself, and I think even while Sawyer was in the group, as a shepherd. And one of the names that they called him was Shep, short for shepherd. He was a shepherd that led them through Heaven's Gate. I see. That was actually the last name that they had was Heaven's Gate. They started out um, calling themselves Human Individual Metamorphosis, and then it was Total Overcomers Anonymous. And there were other names that they talked about as well that you can hear in the, the tapes, the meeting tapes. So do you think that um, a representative will be back to assist in the future, or do you think... You know, um, one of the members now it might step into that leadership position. Well, this that's what brings us to why their graduation and why they left um, when they did. It there's uh, I think three videos on YouTube um, and also on Venmeo. Um, I think it's called the Heaven's Gate on Venmeo. Vimeo. I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. Um, uh, Doe's final exit, which was actually the last one, that's right, that was a couple of days before they graduated, before they left their vehicles. Um, but the one that I'm thinking of is last chance to evacuate planet Earth before it is recycled. So a lot of people bring up like um, doomsday cult and if the Earth was going to be recycled and they left in 1997, we're all still here 20-something years later, like what's going on? Mm -hmm. Um we believe that the earth is being recycled and that looks like the dreaded C word that mm -hmm. we can't say, you know, right. and the, the dreaded V word that followed the C word. And also anything that happened in between their exit in 1997 up to the present of people, vehicles dying. Um, eventually the entire human population will be recycled along with the earth, spaded under, made new. Like uh, Sumer. Mm. Like uh, if we want to talk about Atlantis. Sure. Whether people yeah. want to say that's real or not, but there's so much evidence that it was, that there were thriving, technologically advanced civilizations on this planet that were completely wiped out. Completely wiped out. Um. And that was when they were recycled. Mm -hmm. So we believe that's happening, and it will escalate. It also ties in with revelations in the Bible, um, that this process is going to happen again, mm -hmm. as it has in the past. That's why we, like, we've stated a lot of times that we're not, we do what we do because we want every single person on the planet 
to hear this information and then make a choice and then decide, do I believe this or do I just want to stay in the human kingdom? Do I want to start separating from my humanity and focusing on the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the next level, Mm -hmm. or just keep listening to discarnates and keep staying in the human condition? Every single person needs to be faced with that choice. So we're not like going and talking to all these people and doing live live streams and meeting people one-on-one or in a group situation like we did at Mm -hmm. the lodge um, to form a new group or to convince people that this is the truth. We just want to give people the opportunity to hear the information and then go and research and decide for yourself if it's something you want to know further about and then maybe start separating from the world and your humanity and taking next steps. Next steps don't mean sacrificing your vehicle. We feel, and we could be wrong about this, that um, that's not what's being required of us right now. That was required of the class because they had tea and dough present with them to take them through that overcoming process. We don't claim to be anywhere near the level of tea and dough we don't try to set ourselves up like that. We just, he was in the group for 19 years. I'm maybe crazy for believing in all this, but I do wholeheartedly. And I can't help but talk about it with people and maybe, you know, look at it a little bit and uh, uh, let your uh, past programming go and give it uh, an honest uh, a look through without, you know, listening to what, the media says about it, like you stated, Mm -hmm. there's a ton of, you're like, well, I didn't, I didn't even know that it's every, and that was my thing with heaven's gate too. It's like, what the hell were they doing for 20 something years? Right. There's something more to this than just, we're going to get on a UFO. Well, exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Like there's, there's more. And then you start learning what that, that was. And it's like, wow, I believe that (laughs) I recognize that truth. Absolutely. Can I add something to that? Yeah. Um, that um, every human on the planet is potentially going through their own best next steps towards ultimately membership in the next level at some future date or some future civ- civilization. We're not the judges of people, what they do and what they, what they believe in and what they don't believe in. And uh, what the next level is going to do with those souls. And so, you know, people in the world have lessons that are very difficult. And uh, they grow from those lessons. And the idea of eliminating your body so that you don't have to deal with those lessons, you know, like, uh, like to get back at somebody because they, they dissed you or something, you know, in the hallway in school or whatever, they, they, you know, uh, or, you know, you lost your business and you can't support your family anymore, so I'm just going to off myself. You know, those, those are lesson opportunities to rise above while we have these vehicles. And rising above means gain the strength of mind to say, no, I'm not going to just end this, this beautiful opportunity to learn by, you know, or, or to get back at somebody, you know, like a suicide bomber or something, you know. Uh, all these things, uh, those are not next level uh, behaviors and ways. So, so nobody, uh, so we're not the judge of anybody. We put the information out and, uh, and, and then it's up to what anybody wants to do with it. We don't keep any tally. We don't have a list of people that are believe and don't believe and that are in a, some kind of inner circle. We don't have any inner circles. There is no cult. <laughs> there is no group and there's not going to be and I, I don't want there to be because uh, at the same time, if things like that form, mm. if groups like that form and they, they ask me to come talk to them, I will go to, I think I will go talk to them. I will ask Doe in my mind first if, I, if he thinks that's a good idea. And, but I'm not going to, you know, pretend to be the old member now. Right. Even, you know, because I'm not. And uh, so, but if I have one more minute, uh, on the way down here, uh, I'm not going to make a big introduction to this, but 
uh, pertaining to your question, uh, I was writing the exact same thing that you were asking in the question. Uh, it was an illegal document that I'm writing because we're being sued by the webmasters of the Heaven's Gate website, mm-hmm. who have totally got off track, I believe, uh, suing for talking about T&O and, and playing their tapes on my live stream, mm-hmm. our live stream. But uh, so anyway, as I was writing that, because we've been accused of that right now we're talking about anti-suicide. Mm-hmm. But some people have said to us uh, on blogs and chat rooms and on YouTube channel and things like that, that, yeah, sure, you're going to get in the door that way with people so that they'll listen to you. And then one day you're going to come around and say, oh, Marshall Applewhite told me that you all have to commit suicide. And they're going to be sucked in, so they're going to believe it. And they're going to go off themselves. And, uh, and I've got 15 years that I've proven that I don't want to be anybody's leader. And, I'm, and we don't get communications from Doe like that. We don't get new instructions. Mm -hmm. He left behind all the information we need. And uh, and if 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 somebody doesn't look at that information, then they're never going to know what exactly he was talking about all those years. And uh, and uh, so that's a fear that is being used to try to shut us up. Mm -hmm. They put that in their legal. Because they filed a preliminary injunction against us, oh. a motion for a preliminary injunction, mm. um, and said that what we're doing is causing people to commit suicide. Right. Mm. Or Which that, they don't that, have any documented proof of that. Right. Nobody has committed suicide since the group. 2000. Yeah, the group mm-hmm. left, and there were four members, four prior members of the group that, that took that step. Right. Right. Right, and uh, and they're acting. the The document reads because they have lawyers and we don't, um, as if we were the ones that. And I wasn't even involved, so it's it's funny, but yeah. it's yeah, uh, really funny. Um, it reads as if we were the ones that convinced those former members mm-hmm. to take that step. Well, Kathy didn't even know them. Right. Yeah, I didn't and, even. And I, I was in touch with them, and actually, I. Uh, when Riccotti called me and asked me to uh, that I could assist him in some way with his leaving his vehicle, uh, I said I can't do that, Riccotti. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I could be implemented in your your exit, right? And I don't want to be in that position. I had a child at the time, and you know, Riccotti and, left in 1998. Right. So Riccotti uh, is the one. This shirt is actually from. Our, you know, our friends next door. Yes. But this is the, the original design of the shirt that Ricotti made oh. right when the group left. Yeah, part of this I part see. of it, yeah. And what if they are right? He's and the he one that said that. that. Yeah, what if right. they are right? You know, he, he posed that question to the public. And, and Mark and good. Sarah sued him after he died. Mark and Sarah are the web, <laughs> webmasters of the Heaven's Gate website. Wow. Yeah, they sued him right after he committed uh the final act and his daughter he left everything to so right. they sued him and then they sued her literally wow. within less than almost a month after her father passed they they sued her wow yeah well, goodness yeah and I, those are the same people that are suing us now in federal court for literally millions of dollars they're asking for wow Crazy. Yeah, I am so sorry, y'all. I I believe that you it's are. It's been terrible. Yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> yeah, I believe that you're, you know, it, in it to just present the information and leave it there. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think you're. You've you've made it definitely very clear. You know that that's not what you're condoning in any way. So yeah. we definitely. thought about like um, I wanted to have what I called the center, and I still do a place where people can come and listen to the audios and watch the videos and talk to us and other people who believe um, and have a museum of things. The group left a lot of stuff behind of which Mark and Sarah have in their possession and they haven't shown it to anybody for 26 plus years. Wow. They've just given little pieces to different media groups over the years. Um, 
we feel that all of that should be public, which is what the group wanted. Mm -hmm. And there's countless hours of audio talking about what they wanted to happen to their material, their message. Wow. And it's all just being suppressed and um, at the risk of, you know, being, uh, I guess, convicted of, of the loss of what they're suing us for and having to owe them millions of dollars, we still can't stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good point, you know? Um, and honestly, if you, if you do end up uh, creating this center, I would love to hear about it because I'd love to come and visit. Yeah, so, we, so yes. I'm glad you brought that because I, yep. I totally went off on what I was, because the lawsuit is just so all-consuming and terrible. But when we were talking about, like, we were looking at property in New Mexico and it was like, okay, we're going to get land and then we're going to have this big, huge house in the center of this little itty bitty town where the group was roughly in the same area. And it's like, okay, so if we have land... And we have people come out and just chill out on this land like they just get to chill out there. Yeah. Like what if, uh, you know, it's the, the middle of New Mexico desert. There's wildfires all the time out there from just lightning hitting the ground and burning up, you know, hundreds of acres of land. It's like, well, well, they can't have fires then. And we don't want people drinking out there. You know, it was like all of a sudden we were like having to think of bringing a community of people together. It's like we don't have the effort the energy or the desire to even want to do that so mm. to be accused of it's a lot of work like starting a cult right if that's what you're <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> that's the quote for this episode yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of work and we have no desire yes. to do any of that work <laughs> And I think, uh, I think that's a good point to end on. So um, if you want to hear more about uh, their thoughts and opinions on these sort of questions, uh, definitely consider becoming a pair junkie because we're going to do a exclusive episode on Patreon. Um, but thank you all so much for joining us today. This has been such a fascinating conversation. And I think you brought a lot of really interesting points that not many people know about. I know I have watched lots of documentaries on Heaven's Gate and I did not know most of the stuff that you guys brought up. So that's really fascinating. Um, Thank you but, for giving us the opportunity to, to yeah. talk and tell people the truth. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yes. And um, like I said, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please go ahead and check us out on Patreon. You can also follow us on TikTok at uh, Haunted City Podcast. You can find us under that name on all social media platforms. But with that, thank you guys again. My name is Madison Timmons and stay spooky, y'all. <laughs>